bright beauty every student matters hello students in this lecture we are going to start with our third chapter which is synthetic fibers and plastics so students around you you have different kinds of clothes different kinds of mattresses different kind of substances right so they are made up of something it is not like we obtain that complete cloth from something from a tree or something somewhere no we have to prepare that right that cloth that you have is has been made from certain substances certain fiber or certain sub, uh, certain uh, fiber or any cloth right so for example you have cotton shirts you have linen you have many other uh, substances different fibers so some of them are synthetic some of them are natural yes students there are different kinds of fabric and that is what we are going to learn about in this chapter we are basically going to discover what kinds of fibers we have around us what uh, which of them are natural which of them are synthetic and how do we obtain all of them right so let us start students basically clothes which we wear are made from fabrics are made up of fabrics fabrics are made from fibers obtained from natural or artificial sources you have a cloth for example this is a cloth now if you take a small portion and you zoom out this portion what will you see that there are fibers straight fibers present in a criss cross manner with us with each other this is how a cloth is arranged basically the fibers are intermixed into each other into a pattern and hence that whole system forms a cloth these individual strands are fibers they are basically arranged together intermixed together and they combine to form a cloth so these individual strands are fibers and this whole cloth is now known as fa uh, fabric this is now fabric so fibers combine to form fabric and these fibers can be obtained naturally or can be prepared synthetically as well we can synthesize them as well and the naturally obtained fibers are known as natural fibers the fibers that we produce that are man made are known as synthetic fibers so students let us start with natural and synthetic fibers now what are the difference natural fibers like cotton wool silk etc basically cotton is obtained from a plant from the plant of cotton wool is obtained from different animals such as sheep sheep has wool on its surface so wool is obtained from sheep then silk silk is obtained from silk worm basically it is a worm that produces silk so these are all obtained from nature all of these are natural uh, sources from which we are obtaining these fibers so natural fibers are obtained from plants or animals right the synthetic fibers on the other hand are made by human beings we make these fibers hence we call them synthetic fibers or man made fibers so there are two kinds of fibers first one are natural second one are synthetic right so students what are synthetic fibers there is a picture in front of you in the first picture in case a it is a necklace made from beads it is a necklace right so how are they the beads held together there is a thread under it and all the beads are present simultaneously they have been arranged in a way that they do not escape from the structure right and they form a necklace then in the second structure there is there are paper clips joined to form long chains these paper clips 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 14 14 there are 14 paper clips and they join to form a long chain right hence if even if you open this necklace there will be a long chain of beads right so what do we learn from this picture these both the pictures basically synthetic fibers are a chain of small units as you saw that as you saw in this case that in paper clips this one paper clip is a small unit right but if you join a number of paper clips you will form a long chain so a chain of small units joined together is known as a synthetic fibers right each small unit is actually a chemical substance this each in the case you saw that one unit was one paper clip this was an example now in synthetic fibers what happens is this one unit is basically a chemical substance so uh, that one chemical substance forms a long chain 
by combining a number of molecules uh, in a straight chain right now many such small units combine to form a large single unit called a polymer when they form a long chain that long chain that long structure is known as that long unit is known as polymer now where does this name come from the word polymer comes from two greek words poly meaning many basically many units are joined and mer means unit so there uh, polymer means many units hence many units join to form a single unit a single structure and that structure is known as polymer now polymers occur in nature also cotton for example is a polymer called cellulose cotton is basically a uh, polymer known as cellulose cellulose is made up of a large number of glucose units several glucose units join glucose then glucose then glucose basically you join a number of units of glucose and you form a cotton fiber right hence what do we uh, understand that synthetic fibers are basically made up of many single units of a chemical substance joined together to form a longer structure which ultimately is known as a synthetic fiber right students this is what a synthetic fiber is so we have learned till now that what are natural and synthetic fibers what are the differences between both of them and how we obtain both of these right synthetic fibers are man made they are not obtained from nature while natural fibers are obtained from nature such as cotton silk wool right types of synthetic fibers now students we saw that synthetic fiber is formed by joining a chemical substance in uh, a number of times to form a longer structure and that structure is known as polymer right so that chemical substance can be a different substance uh, in many fibers right so by joining different chemical substances we can form different kinds of fibers as simple as that now students let us start from the first kind of synthetic fiber which is rayon now you know that silk is obtained from silk worm right and it was discovered in china and was kept uh, as a closely regarded secret for a long time because silk is a very very shiny and silky cloth which has a good value it is very very costly because of its uh, shiny appearance its silky appearance its silky touch so uh, silk worm basically produces a uh, silk the fiber and then from that fiber we make silk cloth right it was started in china then it was very costly because of its appearance its beautiful texture fascinated everybody now attempts were made to make silk artificially as well obviously it is not possible for everyone to afford silk for everyone to buy silk so there was the development of a synthetic fiber basically which looked like silk and that is rayon it looks and feels like silk that is why it is very much useful scientists created a fiber having properties similar to that of silk now that fiber is rayon its properties are similar to silk let us see how how is rayon similar to silk it is obtained by chemical treatment of wood pulp although wood pulp is a natural substance but the fiber we obtain is synthetic only you have to understand that its source is from nature but it is a synthetic fiber because we prepare it artificially using different chemical substances hence it is a synthetic fiber now this fiber was called as rayon or artificial silk rayon is also known as artificial silk because it has similar properties to that of silk now it is obtained from a natural source called wood pulp wood pulp it is cheaper than silk and can be woven like silk fibers what is the advantage basically rayon is cheaper and can be woven like silk now it can also be dyed into a wide variety of colors silk is not that easy to dye but this rayon can be dyed into variety of colors to give you different colors in the same cloth and it has a good appearance so this rayon is much more advantageous than silk obviously there are some comparisons uh, in which silk is far better because of its originality but rayon also stand stands good and has good properties which are valuable to us because of its cheaper value now rayon is mixed with cotton to make bed sheets or mixed with wool to make carpets so it is used to make bed sheets and carpets by mixing it with cotton and wool right so students this was about rayon 
Now coming to the next fiber, the second kind of synthetic fiber that is nylon. We studied about rayon, it has similar properties to that of silk. Now we are on to nylon. Now it is another man-made fiber, hence it is synthetic. Any man-made fiber will be called as synthetic fiber. Now it is made without using any natural raw material, it is not using any natural raw material. It is prepared from coal, water and air. These are the three ingredients that are used to make nylon, coal, water and air. As you know that the substances used for its construction, its uh, making of this nylon is done from coal, water and air. So it has entirely different properties. It was the first fully synthetic fiber. The first fiber that is fully synthetic is nylon. It is fully synthetic. It has no natural resource into it. Now it is, what are the important properties? It is strong. Obviously a fabric has to be strong for its durability. If it is strong, it will last longer. It can face different adversities easily. It will not tear uh, very easily. Then it is elastic. Another use that it is elastic. And then it is lightweight as well. It is not a heavy fabric a fiber. It is a light fiber, it is a light fabric and it is elastic and strong as well. So it is much more better, much better than other fibers due to these properties. Because these properties are very important to us. The fabric uh, fiber is strong, elastic and lightweight as well. Then it is lustrous and easy to wash. Another advantages are that it is lustrous and very easy to wash. What else is needed? It is shiny. It is strong, it is elastic, it is light and it is easy to wash as well. So nylon is a very good fiber for our daily use. It is used to make socks, ropes, tents. Ropes and tents because it is very, very strong. So because it is strong, so it can be uh, used to make ropes, uh, tents, toothbrushes because of its durability, because we need toothbrushes for a longer time. So it uh, remains durable, it remains as such for a longer time. Then car seat, another use of its strength and lust, uh, and uh, lightweight and strength. Car seat belts, sleeping bags because of, uh, why, is he, why is it being used in uh, sleeping bags? Because of its elastic uh, nature and lightweight nature. And also curtains. Basically, so nylon is a very useful fibric, fiber because of its advantageous features such as strength, elasticity, lightweightedness luster and easy to wash. It is easy to wash as well. Now students, what are the uses of nylon? Now you know that nylon is a very important fabric. It has very important features. So what are the uses of nylon? Basically, it is used for making parachutes. Uh, parachutes as you can see in this picture is a very important uh, substance that we use for uh, different purposes. Basically for escaping uh, from a plane crash or for paragliding or many other sports activities as well. It is a very important instrument to us and it requires a, a, a fiber that is lightweight, that is elastic and strong. It must hold a person properly, a person or two persons because we need a good strength of that fiber as well, its elasticity and its lightweightedness. Hence, we use, para, hence we use nylon for making parachutes. And ropes for rock climbing. Now you know that for rock climbing we need very strong ropes. Right? So because of its strength it is used for making ropes for rope climbing. Rock climbing. Then a nylon thread is actually stronger than a steel wire. Can you imagine its strength? A steel wire is weaker than a nylon thread. So it is very very strong. So nylon's major advantage is its strength. Right students? Now, uh, let us do a simple activity. In this picture, as you can see, this is a clamp stand and on the clamp stand you have a thread and under the thread you are hanging a pan with the help of that thread only. Basically, you are testing the strength of fibers. In the first case, you are taking cotton as the thread. In the first case, this thread is cotton. So, uh, total weight required to be, basically you will be putting different weights in this pan to break the thread. Now basically what are we trying to do? We are trying to notice the strength of the threads. So nylons come, nylon comes out 
to be the strongest then cotton then silk and then wool the strongest fiber comes out to be nylon its tensile strength is very good and it it holds on to larger weights because of its strength so basically this activity also proves to us that nylon can be uh, nylon is the fiber that is strongest among all other fibers because of its properties because of its uh, origin also because it is made from coal air and water so it has different properties altogether and it is very important to us as well now students coming on to the next fiber which is polyester 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 does not what it is also another kind of synthetic fiber only as the name suggests that poly and ester it is made from a number of molecules of an ester different molecules of ester arranged in a line to form a fabric and that fabric is known as polyester you will be getting to know what an ester is as well but you uh, you just have to understand that polyester is made up of different molecules of ester now polyester does not get wrinkled easily basically we do not have to iron it again and again it does not get get wrinkled easily this is one advantage it remains crisp and is easy to wash it remains crisp and is easy to wash so it does not require so much of washing it remains fresh this is an advantage of polyester due to this only it is quite useful for making dress materials because of its uh, uh, property of not getting wrinkled easily and remaining crisp and being easy to wash it is useful for making dress materials because we use we wash our dress materials a lot so we need a fiber which is easy to wash as well so polyester is used in making dress materials because of its properties now terylene can be drawn into very fine fibers that can be woven like any other yarn this is another polyester which can be drawn into very fine fibers which can be woven like any other yarn you must have seen yarns of different cotton and wool uh, so terylene can be drawn into very fine fibers to make yarns now pet you must have heard pet a lot many times pet is polyethylene tetraethylate it is a very familiar form of polyester polyester has different forms the first one is terylene the second one is pet which is uh, polyethylene terethylate uh, terethylate and it is used for making bottles utensils films wires and many other useful products so what do you understand as we are making utensils and bottles as well and wires it is a strong fiber as well it is a strong fiber it is a durable fiber it is easy to wash it does not get wrinkled and it remains crisp these are the advantages of uh a polyester fiber right students now this is what i was talking about it is made up of esters polyester as the name tells you that it is poly plus ester is actually made up of repeating units of a chemical called an ester basically ester then again ester then again ester and this goes on for a uh, hundreds of time basically n may be equal to 100 or 1000 or 1 lakh it depends on what a number of esters you are using these esters combine to form long chains and these long chains form fibers basically polyesters esters are the chemicals which give fruity smell these substances have fruity smell this ester substance the chemical substance has a fruity smell fabrics are sold by the names like polycot polywool terricot etc as the name suggests these are made by mixing two types of fibers polycot is a mixture of polyester and cotton polywool is a, a mixture of polyester and wool right so this is how uh, polyesters basically what polyesters are and what are the uses of polyesters and what are the different mixtures of polyester with other substances as well right students so this was all about polyester now we are on acrylic another synthetic fiber students we wear sweaters and use shawls or blankets in winters now we are on to winter clothes right so we use sweaters shawls different hoodies sweatshirts and blankets in winter all of these are not made from wool the original wool many of these are not actually made from natural wool though they appear to resemble wool they resemble the wool very much as you can see in this picture this is all acrylic fiber 
this is very very similar to wool but it is not wool it is acrylic fiber and they resemble wool in the appearance these are prepared from another type of synthetic fiber called acrylic our sweaters and uh, sweaters shawls and blankets are made from acrylic not wool and it is very similar to wool it has good properties it it can keep you warm it is soft to touch right all these properties make acrylic useful in winters and in making sweaters and shawls what are the advantages clothes made from acrylic are relatively cheap they are cheaper than wool they are available in a variety of colors wool is not available in all colors the original wool but acrylic acrylic is available in variety of colors synthetic fibers are more durable and affordable which makes them more popular than natural fibers the two things that are important is that they are more durable because of their strength and affordable they are cheaper because they are easily obtained from uh, surroundings they they can be easily uh, prepared in our laboratories so they are cheaper hence they are more popular than natural fibers themselves right these are the advantages now what are the disadvantages of synthetic fibers synthetic fibers melt on heating this is the disadvantage of of synthetic fibers that they do not burn they melt on heating if the clothes catch fire it can be disastrous obviously the fiber melts and sticks to the body of the person wearing it suppose you are wearing something uh, on the occasion of diwali and suddenly a cracker bursts near you and it ca uh, your clothes catches fire so that cloth instead of burning it will melt and it will stick to your skin which will be more harmful it will cause immense burns to your skin all the synthetic fibers are prepared by a number of processes using raw materials of petroleum origin called petrochemical this is another property this is not a disadvantage this is just a fact that uh, a number of fibers are processed are used are prepared by using a lot of processes using raw materials of petroleum which are also called as petrochemicals right so uh, right students characteristics of synthetic fibers now students uh, what are synthetic fibers we have already talked about synthetic fibers their advantages their disadvantages now we'll be studying a little bit about their characteristics synthetic fibers possess unique characteristics which make them popular dress materials as i told you they are easy to wash they are shiny they are durable they are cheap and there are uh, many other properties such as strength their durability uh, their elasticity these uh, properties of synthetic fibers make them useful for making popular dress the, for making dress material this is the important property then they dry up quickly and are durable less expensive readily available and easy to maintain these are the advantages these are the characteristics they dry up quickly right they are durable they are less expensive they are readily available and they are easy to maintain obviously if you are using a fabric in your daily life it must be cheaper obviously it must be readily available it must be durable we cannot keep on buying clothes every week we need something that is durable right and it must be easy to maintain easy to wash so that we can use it over and over again right students now there is a simple activity to prove this fact that synthetic fibers are much more better than natural fibers you take two pieces of cloth take two pieces of cloth the cloth one and the cloth two both of them are half meter square the area has been uh, area is same now one of them is basically uh, natural and other one is synthetic now what you do is you take a take two beakers and fill them with water now you dip each fiber into the water and now take them out now you have the fiber in wet form both the fibers this is the natural fiber and this is the synthetic fiber right what do you notice is after you take out the uh, fiber the water left in the natural fiber is much less water left in the beaker after you have taken out the natural fiber the beaker basically the water is very much less while in the case of synthetic the water is comparatively more which means that synthetic fiber absorbs less water while the natural fiber absorbs more water right so you can easily dry that synthetic fiber when you dry it out it will dry fast while the natural fiber will dry slowly 
So what did we learn? That when we compare the volume of the water remaining in each container, we get to know that the natural fiber absorbed much more water than the synthetic fiber and hence it can be said the synthetic fibers absorb lesser water uh, as compared to the natural fiber and also they dry up very quickly. This is because synthetic fibers do not have spaces between the fibers present in the cloth. In the, uh, the fabric does not have spaces in the fibers. Hence, we can say that the water is much less absorbed in synthetic fiber and they can be dried back easily as well. So, students, this was all about the property of characteristics of synthetic fibers, their advantages. 